Here are the charts. Now, these charts will print out. You can do them double-sided, printed, flip on short edge, staple in the upper left corner, and it makes a nice little booklet for you to hand out at the meetings if you want. Starting out with the burndown chart, which you'll notice has the uh, ideal pace line in green and the 20% variance, 20% acceptable variance marked by the red cone. And we do get color indicators to tell us whether or not we are in a safe zone. It'll be green if it's in a safe zone, red if we're outside the cone. We have on page two of the charts, we've got the metrics for the current sprint with indicators telling us whether we're in a healthy zone or an unhealthy zone and uh, give us a little statement about where it should be and whether it's in a, a good place or not. In the lower half of page two, you'll see that we have the trending metrics for uh, the last eight sprints in this particular case. Now again, back on setup, I chose that I wanted to start considering data as of August 18th. So you'll see that it's only considering data from August 18th to October 6th. Flipping down to page three, we've got, again, the, the burn down chart, exact same burn down chart. It's only here for reference because it combines with the chart below it, which is the variance from goal per day. This is by what percentage are you varying from the pace line? And the reason I did this is because as you move through the sprint, the uh, cone of acceptable variance gets smaller, and so a small variance becomes a bigger deal as you move down that pace line. And so you can see here that on, uh, on Friday, they were at less than 20% variance, and on Tuesday, they were at more than 80% variance. But if you look up at the burndown chart, it doesn't look like it's that big a deal. It doesn't look like it's that far out of whack. So that's the point of that. To the right, we have the percentage of commitment that has been accepted chart. And this is what, again, we want to see at 80% or more. On page four, we've got the daily progress by card. This is one of my favorite charts because what it's showing me is, in a color-coded way, where did the team put their energy on which day of the sprint? So it's color-coded with the colors of the rainbow, Roy, G, Biv, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. So red is first. So where you see red bars, that's indicating that the team started working on that card that day. This tells me right away the team put the first three cards in progress that day on day one. So my question would be, why did you put three cards in progress on day one instead of putting three times the effort on priority number one? Orange, again, we had three cards in progress. Yellow, we now have five cards in progress. All five of their cards are in progress at the same time and nothing is done. So this is a question I would be asking during their stand-up meeting or during their uh, retrospective. And I do want to point out that the RoboScrum spreadsheet only gives you grounds for questions. You should never use any of the data in here to go accuse the team of doing something or yell at them for doing something. This is just to give you grounds for asking intelligent questions and finding out what the team's reasoning was. There are legitimate ways to get yourself in a situation of having everything in progress and nothing completed, but it's something we'd like to minimize. Then we have, uh, on the next page, we see a chart that we've already seen uh, in, the, in the larger presentation, which marks whether the team won or lost the sprint based on their ability to complete at least 80% of the original commitment and have surprise work represent no more than 20% of that original commitment. Then we have the work in progress per day chart. What we need to see is a small stripe of red going from the upper left to the lower right corner of this chart because red represents work in progress and we would rather see most of the work be either not started or done. So in this situation, we've got the blue representing work not started, red is representing work in progress, green is work that's done. And we are not seeing that stripe. So this is telling us that they had too much in progress initially and it was too far into the sprint before they got anything done. Accuracy of commitment and estimation. Again, we've already seen these in the, uh, in the presentation, but uh, just notice the color-coded bullets uh, to let you know whether you're in a danger zone, whether you're already outside the acceptable variance or you're running in a healthy zone based on whether the bullet is green, yellow, or red. Actuals versus targets. This one is a little bit of a strange chart, but what it intends to show is assuming that your work capacity was as it is reflected in your data, so the work capacity being represented by the small orange dot, if your work capacity is the, is the metric that's true, then the empty purple circle, that should be the target for your commitment. You should have committed in the empty purple circle if the solid orange dot is correct. 
But if what you're saying is, no, 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 our commitment was correct, it was our work capacity that was off, then you'd look to the solid purple dot and the empty or orange circle. So that's where your work capacity should have been if your, velocity or your commitment was correct. Because again, we don't want those to vary by more than 20%. So this is an either or chart. Which one do you have more faith in, work capacity or your commitment? And then we have our focus factor chart, which is one that, again, we've looked at already in the presentation, as well as velocity versus work capacity. And finally, the success at scale. Now, this is why we have the um, scale tab, where we're entering the size of the card and whether or not it was accepted. What this is showing us is, at each uh, interval along the Fibonacci sequence, how likely is the team to succeed if they adopt a card of that size? So what this is showing us is that if they adopt a two-point card, they're 100% likely to succeed. They've, pr they've succeeded on 100% of their two-point cards, as they have, by the way, on their 13-point cards. But when you get to their five-point cards, for some reason, they're less than 80% successful. So what you'll see over time, and this is, this is a strange-looking chart, but that's because there's not a lot of data here. What you'll see over time is that uh, it'll go from 100% at the left for the smaller cards and it'll sort of arc down below 80% at some point along the scale. And then as a scrum master, you can use this to uh, advise your team on the maximum size of a card that they should consider bringing into a sprint. So those are all of the charts. And then we have the RoboCoach tab, which gives you a dynamically generated body of text that goes through the spreadsheet and analyzes the data for you and tells you things like, uh, First, we begin with a summary, and it gives you the, the, five, the variance uh, on, of all your different metrics. And so below that, we get the summary of each card, telling you whether it was planned, how many points were um, estimated on the card, how many points total were invested in the card, and then whether the card was approved and whether it was estimated correctly. And you'll see on this first one, it was originally estimated at eight points. Total investment was nine points. And it says that was estimated correctly. Again, going back to the, the Fibonacci shadow that we talked about in the presentation, where uh, nine was not an option for them when they were estimating uh, with Fibonacci. So eight had to be judged as being correct. However, if you look at the third card, you'll see that it was rejected. And had it been accepted at two points, then it would have been judged to be incorrectly estimated because a two was available to the team for estimates. And then we get down into the more interesting body of text, where we're saying things like, your focus factor is 86.36%, which is in the healthy range of 64 to 96%. Um, and then it starts asking some questions. Are you reporting your uncommitted work, like any side projects, et cetera, for your retrospective? If not, discuss in your retro how and when to report those items so that we can properly start tracking them. Uh, it gives you, uh, you know, an evaluation of whether your found work was in a healthy zone, and then asks, why did you need to pull so much work into the sprint this time? You had too much found work or too much adopted work in the sprint. So go back and maybe increase your, your uh, commitment. So that's the point. And then it comes down to the bottom and wishes you luck in the next sprint, because this sprint was not, unfortunately, a success. So if you like what you've seen on the spreadsheet, you're more than welcome to go to rapidscrum.com and download that. Again, the password to unlock the tabs on the spreadsheet is rapid scrum in all lowercase. And you'll also find a PowerPoint version of the slides you've just seen. So we've gone through in some detail how to do these metrics, uh, spreadsheet, calculating them. That's really more for the people that are interested in using the spreadsheet and need to understand it. For the teams, the collection of these metrics is very simple. It's no more than you're probably doing already but it gives you a set of metrics that is comparable across teams and measures whether the team is in the envelope of performance that's likely to ensure ongoing success and ongoing improvement. As I said in the big beginning, the big risk of a hyperproductive team is getting a little bit off track without realizing it and then crashing and burning and wondering what happened. Unfortunately, we see many instances of that happening. So these metrics can help you. Uh, they're going to go up on the web. So we already have a number of teams around the world that are starting to use these. 
So uh, maybe in the future we'll have an international competition. So all you teams that want to be great out there can, can demo your stuff to us. Yeah, that's a very good point. These metrics are not only comparable within the same company, they're comparable between companies. So now you can have a competition with your friend who is doing a scrum team at another company too. So good luck and, and, and may the force of scrum be with you. <laughs>